Hey folks, this is part two in the Surviving the EMP series that I'm doing. The first one was Thursday night on a live stream. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's got some great ideas on it. But hang on, I got some more for you right now. Orlando Prepper coming at you again. Like I said, this is the second part probably the final part for a while, on surviving an EMP. On Thursday night, we covered a lot of, lot of things there, but today I want to cover a couple of more, and that's your water and your electri electricity, if we do have an EMP. We're going to start off with the water. Now, even if your water utility doesn't have power and can't pump water, it might be possible for you to still get some after the lights go out. If you look at this diagram, let me get this up here for you. Right there, you'll see you got three houses there on different elevations. And your water utility, you see that blue line, your water utility has to pump water to that house all the way at the top. Now, if you're, guy, if you're the guy down on the bottom, or even the guy in the middle, you're going to be able to get a little water there. If you'll open up your faucets, the water that was pumped to that top house is still in that plumbing. You can drain it out down through your uh, plumbing system. Of course, the guy on the bottom, he'll get the most, but he's also going to get the worst if he don't know what to do. Because not only is that fresh water going to be pulled down by gravity, wastewater is as well. That's what that brown line is that you see there. So what you have to do, there's a way for you to keep that from flowing into your house. They make plugs. They make plumbing plugs that you can buy at your local hardware store. You can, uh, you'll have to disconnect your sinks uh, and where it drains out in through your wall, you put one of these plugs in that pipe and you tighten it up. You'll have to do the same thing with your toilets. You have to take them off the floor get a plug and put that plug down in that floor drain, tighten that up. So none of that wastewater will back up into your house. So you have the benefit of maybe getting a little fresh water there, filling up your tub, uh, filling up containers or whatever. But you also have the danger of having that wastewater build up in your house. So make sure you get these plugs, keep them on hand just in case lights go out guys speaking of lights let's get on to the electricity first thing I want to talk about is your LED flashlights people are told that LEDs are uh, safe from an EMP or a CME yes they are but every LED flashlight has a little computer chip in it to regulate the power going into those LEDs that will be affected by an EMP. You can see it right here. It's in the bottom of this flashlight. So if you do have those, make sure you got them protected. Put them in a Mylar bag, put them in a Faraday cage, or something like that. I wanted to bring that up real quick. But let's get into your solar power. Your solar power is also susceptible to uh, an EMP and two, two components, possibly two. One for sure your charge controller, it's going to be fried. So make sure you have backups. You got those stored away in a safe place, Faraday cage or whatever. But also your panels just might be susceptible if they have diodes between the poles and the connection box. If you'll go out and you open up that little black box on the back of a solar panel, if you look in and you see something like this, those are diodes. They, they will burn out if an EMP hits. But now, not all panels have these. Some panels just have a metal bar running across those poles there. Those are not susceptible to an EMP. And then your third component uh, in your charging system with solar, of course, is your batteries. Now, if your batteries have what they call a, a BMS, a battery management system, and they are susceptible to EMPs. Uh, most lithium batteries today have that. Not all do. 
So if you're buying lithium, check and see if it has them or not. Uh, some people say you can replace those, and you might be able to, but I, I'm, I've never done it, so I couldn't tell you how to do it. But I know the last thing I want to do is buy a battery I have to crack open and replace a computer chip in. So when you buy your batteries, if you're worried about an EMP, make sure it doesn't have that battery management system in it. Because if it does, it'll zap, your batteries will just be boat anchors. That's pretty much it. Uh, now there are two kinds of, uh, I should say two different voltages that you want to use in a survival situation. Uh, 120 system where you can, if you got a big enough battery bank, you got enough solar panels and power, you can plug in your TV, your refrigerator, you know, maybe even an air conditioner if you have a big system. But for a smaller system, like a 12 volt system like this, what you're going to want to do is get a, uh, another component that you can run from the batteries over to plug in 12 volt appliances or whatever, TVs, radios, lights, the whole nine yards. But if you do go with that 12 volt system, your power actually lasts longer because you don't have the inverter that you had on the 120 volt system. The inverter itself burns energy. So I have to recommend that you go with the 12 volt system uh, 12 volt TVs are cheap. Of course, lights, 12 volt lights are everywhere. Uh, your radios, of course, your 12 volt radios, they're pretty much everywhere and they're inexpensive. So none of these things that you would need for that system are hard to get. Plus, like I said, remember, your power lasts longer when you're just using a 12 volt system. But I did a little research when I was putting all this together. I, wanted, I tried to find a portable solar generator that was EMP proof as you buy it, just like you buy it in the case, one that's EMP proof. I reached out to uh, Jackery and a couple of other suppliers of these things. Jackery was the only one that responded to me. And as you can see here in this email that I got back, their system, their uh, charger, charger, their solar generators, there it is, and their panels are susceptible to an EMP. So they're not safe. You have to store them away in a safe place that's also protected. Uh, but that's up to you. They make blankets. If you got a big system, they make blankets or you can build you a big Faraday box to put it in. But I wanted to bring you those tips, guys. Hopefully it'll help you out. <clears throat> like I said the other night, we're on the verge of war. And the only way anybody can do any serious damage to this country is with an EMP. Because geographically, it's almost impossible to get a, a formidable force over here by air or by sea without it being detected. But an EMP, bang. You guys know how it works. So with that, I'm going to say stay strong, keep prepping, and pray for the United States. The Orlando Prepper is out.